Thank you, uh, Rada, Your Excellencies, Ministers, Queen Mother, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure whose decision it was to put me on after what I hear was a pretty good party last night. Uh, but anyway, I'll, um, I'll do my uh, best and I'm, it's a great pleasure to uh, be here with you today. Look, one in three people um, globally still use solid fuels, wood, charcoal, um, to cook, coal and the like. And one in three people globally, that's more than two and a half billion, two and a half billion people. Without clean cook stoves, these fuels are actually deadly, as you all know. Collecting them causes deforestation. Burning them increases global warming. And breathing their toxic fumes is killing over four million people every single year. Of course, this burden hits one half of the population especially hard, because in much of the developing world, it is women and girls who are responsible for cooking and finding that fuel. So it's women and girls who have their lungs filled with those noxious fumes. It's women and girls who lose precious time collecting fuel when they should probably be at home or studying in schools. And it's women and girls because they're often the ones out collecting the firewood alone who are in danger of harassment and perhaps even worse, uh, rape. Now, we all just signed up to the global goal which says everyone everyone should have access to energy in their own homes by 2030. And that's just 15 years away. And energy access includes cooking at home in a way that is clean, safe and affordable. And this is now a new basic fundamental human right. Until recently, many people thought clean cooking would be beyond the reach of all but the wealthiest people in society. But then the Global Alliance came along and changed that story. Low cost, market solutions exist. Clean cook stoves and fuels have been developed by the inspiring pioneers, many of them, many of you with us today in this room. And I've seen the enormous difference that this can make for myself. Just a few days after I became a Minister of State in International Development with that special responsibility for Africa, I found myself in Tanzania. I was visiting the home of a 62-year-old woman uh, called Elizabeth McQuimba. She lives in the Mwanza region in the north of Tanzania, 16 hours drive from capital Dar es Salaam. Now, until very recently, Elizabeth had to buy expensive, toxic kerosene in order to cook and to light her home. But now, thanks to a DFID uh, sponsored program, uh, she's got solar power and also a clean cook stove. With these two appliances, Elizabeth's life has quite simply been transformed. Her health and that of her family, better. Her worries for the future, uh, many much fewer. And the opportunities ahead of her, much greater. I was so inspired by what I saw that three weeks ago, in London, I invited Kofi Annan, Sir Bob Geldof, Madame Zuma, and many others to come to London and launch what I'm calling Energy Africa. Energy Africa seeks to sort out the problem of electricity in people's homes, and as I'll explain, clean cook stoves as well. But the real star of that London show wasn't Kofi Annan and all of these big bosses, it was actually Elizabeth McQuimba, who flew all the way over from Tanzania to share her own experience. She was in every way the star guest of that event, just like I think the 11-year-old who opened this event was the uh, star uh, at this event. Elizabeth spoke really movingly about how her clean cook stove and that solar energy lighting has completely changed her life, and how NG Africa, as she hopes, will help to transform uh, the lives of millions of people just like her by achieving, achieving the same thing. Now, the NG Africa campaign will bring forward the moment at which the world gets uh, energy uh, in people's home, clean energy, from the current trajectory, which is 2080 to 2030. Now, unusually for DFID, it's not about aid. It's not about just giving out money. It's actually about making the markets work to the benefit of the poorest consumers in the world, in particular by using solar energy, but also combining that with the technology to make this happen. 
It's going to work for four different reasons, and I just wanted to take a moment to tell you about them. The first one is quite simply that solar power, solar cells, photovoltaic cells have crashed in price over the last few years. The second one is the development of the humble lithium battery that's in all your mobile phones. It now is easily capable of taking power during the day from those solar panels, storing it up, and allowing that power to be used up at night. The third reason is that appliances like LED, LED lights, but also televisions, fridges, fans, and many more appliances are far more energy efficient, so we don't need to be generating as much energy in the future. And the fourth, and most critical of reason of all, is because the mobile phone and mobile phone technology now means that consumers are able to co obtain that solar power and pay for it on a pay-as-you-go micro-payment basis. Now, that's actually much more significant than it sounds. Actually, it's much more fundamental than it first sounds. Think about it. The poorest consumers in the entire world, and I'm talking about people who may well live on $1.25 a day, are able in a micropayment way to pay for their own solar power. Brilliant. For the first time, commercial companies like PEG here in Ghana, I spent yesterday with them, MCOPA, Offgrid, Azuri, and many others who are now taking up this challenge are able to provide small-scale off-grid domestic lighting. But it goes further than that, because with micropayments, it means that these consumers who previously have had no access to credit, no ability to buy stuff and then pay for it, now have the ability to pay on a micropayment. And once they finish paying for their solar system, perhaps over a 12-month period, the company can refinance that solar system that's already in their home to allow them to buy something else. And of course, clean cook stoves uh, chief amongst that list of things which should be uh, being purchased in that way. So instead of paying a huge upfront sum of money uh, to get their solar system in the house, these consumers are making these small payments and paying them off over a period of time. And crucially, those payments displace the money that people like Elizabeth were already paying out for kerosene. In the medium term, Elizabeth will actually make a saving of about $700 perhaps over a five to 10 year period. That's an enormous sum of money in Elizabeth's world. And she has already been able to use the savings that she's made amongst other things to replace her roof with tin. And in her case, she now has uh, a clean cook stove as well. So all of this means that so solar revolution can and will, I think, change the market. And it can be do the same for um, the clean cook market as well. Um, I think, it's an absolute scandal, and I hope you share my frustration and anger at this, that the poorest people in the world spend $100 million every single day on solid fuels for cooking and heating. $100 million, which could be spent much better. Paradox paradoxically, this $100 million also helps to kill that population and damage um, their health. With us today, I know we have entrepreneurs, the manufacturers, the distributors, um, who are the people who will be looking to ensure that that $100 million a day can be actually seen as an opportunity, an opportunity to transform an emerging sector into a booming market, an opportunity to create jobs and a supply chain, and most importantly, the opportunity to improve millions of lives. I think it's great that Environ, uh, EnviroFit uh, will support, with support from DFID and the Shell Foundation, have reached its millionth sale of clean cook stoves. It's a huge milestone for this growing sector. I'd like to uh, really congratulate uh, EnviroFit and their team. The challenge, just as with the household solar, is how to turn that one millionth sale into a hundred millionth sale and then into the billionth sale. So it's great that this conference is happening, rather, bringing together uh, technology providers, distributors, investors, to find innovative different ways to grow this market. And in order to achieve that global goal seven, campaigns like Energy Africa will need to support the Global Alliance and others in their work, because access to modern energy means both electricity and clean cooking. So I'm absolutely delighted to be here in Accra today 
reaffirming the United Kingdom's deep commitment uh, to the Global Alliance and to your agenda. We really passionately believe that your vision and your work uh, is the most crucial point uh, of uh, human development, and we are behind you in every single step of the way. As you know, last year the United Kingdom confirmed £31 million of support uh, to the clean cooking sector. Uh, this will build up the evidence base uh, for the work on clean cook stoves and help improve the quality of products. Uh, it will help unlock, I hope, private investment. In fact, it already is in this sector. Vital if the market is to reach everyone. And it will ensure that everyone understands the dangers of poisonous household fuels and knows that better alternatives already exist and are available now. So I want to commend the Global Alliance and your work promoting the clean cooking sector. You've made an incredibly impressive start, amazing progress already, but I think we all know there's a lot more of that to come. I was so proud to take up my seat on the Global Alliance Leadership uh, Council, and I hope that through my role as a DFID minister and through the NG, NG Africa campaign, I can do my bit uh, to help accelerate access to clean energy here in Africa and beyond. By building this market for clean cook stoves and fuels, we can save families time and money and improve the health, their health and protect the environment. Only by combining clean cooking with access to electricity can we ensure that the home is not a place of darkness, or danger and ill health, but instead one of light, safety and empowerment for everyone. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Please continue to do it. There's still a heck of a long way to go. But I know that Global Goal 7 is our incentive to complete this job. Let's work together. Let's get it done. Let's do it better, faster, and on a much, much bigger scale. Thank you very much.